And if they had been hanged too for those crimes, cried Thwackum, they would have had no more than their deserts. A couple of heathenish villains. Heaven be praised we have no Brutuses nowadays. I wish, Mr. Square, you would desist from filling the minds of my pupils with such anti-Christian stuff, for the consequence must be, while they are under my care, it's being well scourged out of them again. There is your disciple, Tom, almost spoiled already. I overheard him the other day disputing with Master Blifil that there was no merit in faith without works. I know that is one of your tenets, and I suppose he had it from you. Don't accuse me of spoiling him, says Square, who taught him to laugh at whatever is virtuous and decent and fit and right in the nature of things. He is your own scholar and I disclaim him. No, no, Master Bliffil is my boy. Young as he is, that lad's notions of moral rectitude I defy you ever to eradicate. Thwackham put on a contemptuous sneer at this, and replied, Aye, aye, I will venture him with you. He is too well grounded for all your philosophical cant to hurt. No, no, I have taken care to instil such principles into him, and I have instilled principles into him too, cries Square. What but the sublime idea of virtue could inspire a human mind with the generous thought of giving liberty? And I repeat to you again, if it was a fit thing to be proud, I might claim the honour of having infused that idea. And if pride was not forbidden, said Thwackham, I might boast of having taught him that duty which he himself assigned as his motive. So between you both, says the squire, the young gentleman hath been taught to rob my daughter of her bird. I find I must take care of my partridge mew. I shall have some virtuous religious man or other set all my partridges at liberty. Then slapping a gentleman of the law who was present on the back, he cried out, What say you to this, Mr. Counselor? Is not this against law? The lawyer with great gravity delivered himself as follows. If the case be put of a partridge, there can be no doubt but an action would lie. For though this be ferrae naturae, yet being reclaimed, property vests. But being the case of a singing bird, though reclaimed as it is a thing of base nature, it must be considered as nullius in bonus. In this case, therefore, I conceive the plaintiff must be non-suited, and I should disadvise the bringing any such action. Well, says the squire, if it be nullus bonus, let us drink about and talk a little of the state of the nation, or some such discourse that we all understand. For I am sure I don't understand a word of this. It may be learning and sense for aught I know, but you shall never persuade me into it. Pox, you have neither of you mentioned a word of that poor lad who deserves to be commended. To venture breaking his neck to oblige my girl was a generous spirited action. I have learning enough to see that. Damn me, here's Tom's health. I shall love the boy for it the longest day I have to live. Thus was the debate interrupted but it would probably have been soon resumed had not Mr. Allworthy presently called for his coach and carried off the two combatants. Such was the conclusion of this adventure of the bird and of the dialogue occasioned by it, which we could not help recounting to our reader, though it happened some years before that stage or period of time at which our history is now arrived. <laughs>